and I'm already back, back at you again with some more content. This time, as you can see, I have um, managed our configuration, put them in nice categories, and you can you can see you can expand all of it. Our, there is just code, some subheadings, and that's about it. Today, um, I'm, yours, yours is probably looking somewhat similar. You can go crazy with it. You can add a lot of comments, write a lot of pros. You can do basically none if you like. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as you enjoy using it, you know how to use it, that's fine. Today I'm going to be talking about something called IDO, as I already spoiled in the last episode. IDO stands for Interactively Do Things. Um, one thing that I really really don't like about Emacs by default is when I hit Control X and B, we invoke switch to buffer it. Now it uses default scratch. But what if I don't want to go to scratch? Maybe I want to go to, I don't know, some buffer I don't know the name of. So I type tab and I get these possible completions. I'm like, okay, so let's do messages. And then I'm going to go to messages. Very nice. Slow and counterintuitive. Now if we do control X, control B, um, we need to switch the window, use control N and P to move around, go to the buffer we'd like to do, or to go to, and then hit enter. That's stupid, especially because I invoked the command in this buffer, not in this one. Let's, actually, let's not kill this buffer, let's get rid of this window. Let's, let's take a look at how we can improve this. Because the same goes for looking for files. Um, I don't know what files I have to, I need to slap tab multiple times, now I see all those files. And this is so annoying. Now I go to like, I don't know, let's, let's go to um, init.dl, but actually that was a bad example, let's go to config, I want to go to config org, I have to keep hitting tab, I go to org, but it's already open, so whatever, I don't like this, let's take a look at IDO, I am going to be using it anyways, so I'm going to make a nice uh, section for it, let's call it IDO, and I'm going to enable IDO mode um, at first, let's just... I don't know, enable idle mode. Let's just write a little bit of elisp here. And the way we do it, let's configure some things first, because um, idle by default, I remember not really liking it. Idle is um, part of Emacs, it's built in, so you don't need to install anything for the default idle that is. Um, we are going to be actually installing packages if you'd like, you, if you'd like to use them, obviously. So. Uh, I do create new buffer always, so it doesn't just, you know, crap the bed when you want to open a non-existent file, enable flex matching, that's going to be make it easier to find certain things, and enable I do everywhere. You can disable this if you just want to use I do for one thing, I want to use it for as many things as possible, I do mode 1. Now let's um, get out of there, and let's save it. We don't have a hotkey to reload our configuration, which bothers me, but we'll get to it eventually. Let's go down here, Control S, Control E, loaded everything now. If I do Control XP now, we have you know something that looks a bit different. We have all our possible buffers all listed now. Uh, it does it does flex matching, so I can do buffer. Actually, uh, there is is there anything I can use it on? Now, I, I can do, I can type let, and since let is inside completions, you know, I can go to this buffer. I can also just go back to config.org. You can select the item you want with tab and complete with tab. This is the reason I use I do, because it makes me, you know, be quicker. And same goes for finding files. I can do config.org, and I'm already there. Um... Now let's get rid of this. This is not what I envisioned. As you can see, IDO is quite nice. And IDO can be actually used as is, if you like. I think it's nice. But there's a few things that bother me. First of all, I'm not a big fan of its um, horizontal, let's say, alignment. I don't like it. I think this like this is the opposite of eye candy. I know I'm an Emacs D. Oh, and by the way, when you want to go back a directory, all you have to do is hit uh, backspace once, 
and it jumps the entire directory, which is great. And you can get into directories with tab or enter as you please. There is something else that I really, really like, and I can only recommend if you're not a big fan of the horizontal um, way that I do those things, it's called I do vertical. And this one we actually have to install, but it's fine. It doesn't take, doesn't take long at all. All we have to do is use package. The package we are installing is called I do vertical mode. And we are going to ensure that it's installed. And after it's initialized, we are going to do I do vertical. Uh, mode 1. Actually, we can also, I like doing this outside of there. We can set I do vertical define keys. I'm pretty sure this is what it was called. Because when we use I do in a vertical mode, so it's instead of going, you know, horizontally, we are going to have a buffer here, much like which key. I would like to move between those items using Control N and Control P. This is not default behavior, and, but it can be very easily enabled, just like this. Let's, let's get out of there, let's save this, and let's switch buffers to init el. Let's execute or refresh our configuration, it's going to contact the host, install it, blah blah. Let's go back, Oops. let's go back, and as you can see, we have this unobtrusive window now. We can use idu as we did before, with typing it and hitting tab. So I want to go to config.org, um, I can just get into there. That's how easy it is. And same goes for files. But I can also hold control and use N and P to select what I'd like to go to. Which is, you know, arguably one of the best things I have ever done in Emacs, enabling I do vertical. There is one issue though, when we do MX, we still have this lame, no real completion, um, prompt. There is a package that acts like I do does, with the difference that it works for MX. It's called Smex. I'm not sure why it's called Smex, um, but it's not really important. What is important though is that it works. So we are going to, as always, use package Smex. Ensure T. There is, by the way, a option, a variable you can set to always ensure, but there is, you know, I like having the per package, um, you know, you know, I like to being a, I like being able to control it um, on a package-to-package -package basis. All we have to do is call smax initialize. I can't type. Initialize. And we also have to bind some keys. Use package also has a functionality to make you bind keys and only bind those keys if this package is actually initialized. Which is, you know, it's pretty nice. It used a bind keyword. Now the syntax is a bit different. What we are going to be doing is binding mx to smax. Like this. And that's it. Nothing else. Let's close this. Save this. Um, let's go to init el. End of file during parsing because we forgot the parentheses. I am apps. Yes, we did. Uh, uh, it happens to the best of us. Let's go to init el. As you can see, I am doing things a bit quicker now because I do. It really is just something that makes your life easier. Now with smax installed, we can do mx, and you have all your uh, all your functions here. The nice thing about I do or smax specifically is that it's going to remember the ones that you used and put them up top in the list. So your most used ones, even if they are long commands that you for some reason did not bind to any key. They are still going to be there and they will be very easily accessible. Which is great. There is alternatives to IDO. You know how to install packages. You can look for them yourselves. I'm going to tell you that there is something called Helm, which is the by far most popular um, way of, you know, just completion for like MX and um, finding files, switching, excuse me, switching buffers and so on. I don't like Helm. I think Helm is really bad. But that's personal preference, you can use Helm if you'd like to. Um, I just really, really don't like it. The other one is called uh, Swiper. I think Mike Zemanski did a video on Swiper, I'm not sure. Swiper, again, I'm not a big fan of, like, default I do comes with um, Emacs by default. So, you don't even have to install it, you can just enable it. 
but it works, it works for everything, it works everywhere, uh, it's really nice. I like it a lot. Um, the next thing, or actually, yeah, there is one more thing that I'm going to uh, actually show you, I think. Because this is a travesty and I don't know who in, at GNU, at the foundation, or who of the Emacs developers actually thought this was a good idea. I am straight up angry, okay? Uh, so I am straight up angry at this. Why on earth is the default buffer list such garbage? Okay, uh, this is sure it's an opinion. I don't I don't want to come across as some opinionated asshole. But Control X, Control B. Not only do I get another window, I need to switch to it. Then I cannot use like I need to use NP. I cannot start typing. I'm going to go to the buffer I want, and I hit Enter, and it's being opened in this different window. I wanted to have this open. In this window, why why is this happening? And for some reason, like the odd thing about it is that Emacs has a built-in mode for selecting buffers that is in every way, shape, and form superior to it, or to this list buffers, and it's not enabled by default. What the hell? This is very strange. It really is, and I'm not sure why it happens, but. Um, you can enable it very easily, just setting a key binding. Okay, all you have to do is set a key binding and be done with it. And it's precisely what we are going to do. Let me change windows here. Let's collapse all of it. Let's make a new portion called buffers. And in there, um, I'm going to say enable i buffer. I buffer is the name of it. So let's let's write some Emacs Lisp. Actually, all you have to do is really set a key. That's that's all you have to do. Nothing else. Um, so you can do it globally because I like having it everywhere. Keyboard. Um, I like binding it to Control X and B, which is what normally I do would be. But then I bind Control X, Control B to I do. If that makes any sense. Um, you you will see in a second. So we have this, and we are going to bind this to I buffer, and that's it. Oops, did I, did I mess up? I did. Let's close this. And the other thing is going to be... Uh, we'll set this in I do. Oops. And we are going to be setting this up for I do. Uh, switch buffers. This one is actually, you can bind those to whatever you like, you can also you even use F keys at your, on your keyboard, you can do use other keys, you can use your mouse, I mean, why would you do that, but still. Um, all of it, you can do whatever you want, really. So yeah, global set key, and again, keyboard, control X, control B, that's all I need to be happy. And we'll bind it to I do switch buffer. This is the default behavior that I have in my config. Again, maybe you don't like it. Maybe you don't want to have it this way. So sure, by all means, change it. Now that we have done all of this, let me show you iBuffer, Control XB. It opens up in the same window, first of all. It has some uh, colors, so it has some nice highlighting here. Uh, you can use NMP to move around. You can use D to delete buffers even. So for instance, I have um, the buffer list. I want to get rid of it. I press D. It's marked for deletions now. Same goes for the compile log and I don't really want the completions one. Now I can type X to execute my marked um, deletions and I can hit Y to make it kill everything. Um, this sounds a bit, you know, a bit brutal, but that's what it is. This is way way faster. I can I also I do control B most of the time because I can hit control X and control B and use N and P to navigate a lot quicker than I can do other things. But I buffer is really nice for deleting buffers. Another thing that I really like about um, uh, I buffer is you can enable something called expert mode. I buffer expert mode is only useful for one thing because every time you're going to be deleting buffers it's going to ask you for confirmation. So if I do, if I actually invoke iBuffer, 
Actually, let's not do that. Let's, let's not invoke iBuffer. Kill buffer iBuffer, yes, yes. Let's go to iBuffer and again. Let's enable this. I'm going, you, don't, you may not want to use expert mode, okay? Especially if you don't have the muscle memory, you know, killing a buffer that you have just spent a few hours in and you didn't save often enough, uh, it can be quite brutal. But whenever I, I only kill buffers when I really need to. I'm the type of dude to MS 100 buffers in a day and then just, you know, forget about them. So if I buffer expert mode, let me uh, source this file. I can use I buffer, click D, then X and it's done. That's, that's quicker, that's simpler and I like it more. Ah, we went through many things today. Wow, there is, well, there is more things that you can really um, that I get to talk about, but for now, uh, I guess that's enough. We have switching buffers is easy now, invoking functions is easy now, um, opening files is much easier now. Um, again, if you don't like it, then try Helm. Helm is very easy to set up as well. There's videos on Helm. Helm is very expensive, it's huge, and I don't like it any bit because it's default. Or like it's, it doesn't have very same defaults in my opinion. Or I'm just used to it, maybe I'm just getting old. And try out Swiper if you'd like. You can watch some video on Swiper as well. I am going to continue using IDO because it's built in and it's simple. But by all means, use whatever you like. I hope you like those packages and those little bit of configuration. Feel free to change whatever you like about it. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Now in the next video we are actually we are actually going to be talking about a few things. One of them is my absolute favorite extension for or package for Emacs. It's called AV and it's going to change your life pretty much. I mean, I'm already stoked. I like using AV so much that I, I want to really just show people and teach people to use it. It's not particularly complicated, but it's there. It's going to also be a very short video, but anyways, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.